It's win or tie and go home. Final game of the season from Allegiant Stadium in Vegas. It's Justin Herbert. It's Derek Carr. The stakes are understood. It's 3-0 early Vegas. Make it 10-0. What a weapon Hunter Renfro has become. Touchdown in his third consecutive game. It's 10-0. Next Chargers possession. We know that they are an aggressive bunch. Fourth and two. Get within seven? No. Let's go for it. Jalen Guyton from Herbert. Is Pisaccia not pleased? Then it's Austin Eckler patiently waiting. Running through a tackler and then play, play that air guitar. Chargers within three. Herbert. Eckler. Puts on the brakes. Gets to the end zone again. Family's going nuts in the Chargers. Have scored 14 straight. Ensuing drive. It's third and 23. Jalen Richard. And just pick up some yards and let's punt. Or get right up there close to the line to gain. Actually fell past the pylon. Then later in this drive, 45 seconds left, and this is incomplete. There are flags down. Chris Harris Jr., yeah, that's, that's P.I., but man, where the pass landed. If you're a Charger fan, you're saying that's a tough call because it all but guarantees this. A touchdown from Josh Jacobs. And the Raiders, back in front, they lead by three at halftime. Chargers, third and one. Eckler stopped. We know Coach Staley's aggressive, but I mean, this ain't Madden, right? Wait, they're going for it. They get stuffed. But the Raiders would get only a field goal. So it was a dice roll in Vegas, but it only cost them three. Next Raider possession. Carr has time. Now flushed out, makes a gorgeous throw here to Brian Edwards. Raiders move the chains. That's a third and six. Now it's third and one. Marcus Mariota's out there. Inside the 10. Money down. Third and goal. Renfro again. They don't settle for three, so now the Raiders get the touchdown. They go for two, don't get it. They lead by 12. Herbert and the Chargers. Got to make something happen. Instead, Herbert's picked by Casey Hayward Jr. Max Crosby, who was an absolute monster, applied the pressure. Raiders make it a 15-point game. About five minutes to go. That's a fourth down. Mike Williams on his knees, not touched down. Initially ruled short to charge and challenge the spot. They get the first down. Now it's fourth and 21. Herbert. A missile to the end zone. Josh Palmer, touchdown Chargers. Go for two. Can they make it a seven-point game? Herbert extends the play, then finds Eckler. It's 29-22. Now Carr. The ball is out. The Chargers are about to get it inside the 20. Instead, somehow, after Bosa knocks it loose, Justin Jones has his hands on it, but is not able to keep it. So the Raiders punt. And now here come the Chargers on fourth down. Raiders gave up 68.2% of the fourth downs that they faced this year, worse than the NFL. There's a fourth down. They get it. It's fourth and 10 again. Once again, they convert, but this time they convert because there is a holding call. Fourth and 10 again. There's Mike Williams. They're running out of time. Herbert to the sideline. Does Jalen Guyton have the ball? They say no on the field. They take a look and say actually yes. Five seconds on the clock and five seconds in their season. Not quite yet. A touchdown to Williams. I was sure they'd go for two. Instead, they kick the extra point. They cash in on a 19-play, 83-yard drive. And now it's overtime. And now Pittsburgh fans are gone. They're not going to tie, are they? Well, looks like the Raiders are intent on taking this kickoff, scoring a touchdown, and getting to the playoffs. 
Carr in overtime has never lost if he's gotten a chance to possess the ball. They're running it again. And there goes Jacobs on the loose. Quickly. They're not quite knocking on the door. Outside the red zone, third down. Carr, a chance to end it. Can't find Waller. Daniel Carlson never missed in this building. And after Carr's not quite able to find that dangerous target in Waller, it means Carlson to give the Raiders the lead. And it's leaking a little right, but it's true. So the Chargers have the opportunity now to win it or tie it with a field goal, which would be good enough. Both these teams are into the playoffs with a tie. First play, Herbert, Jared Cook. Big time gain, but there's an illegal man downfield. Matt Filer is called for getting out a little bit early. That's all right, because now it's fourth down. And that means Herbert to Williams. Look out. He's loose in the secondary. The Raiders are able to knock him out of bounds. Now it's third and six. Herbert looking for Williams. Now it's bobbled. He can't come up with it. Here comes Dustin Hopkins. And again, everybody knew the stakes watching this game. Both teams would make it the playoffs with a, a tie and Hopkins. He's just inside the left upright. So the game is extended. Now the Raiders, as the clock approaches three minutes, Carr to Richard. Derwin James says, I didn't do it. Well, no flag is thrown. Hand up high, close to the face mask. No flag is thrown. It's third and eight. Carr. What a toss to Zay Jones. Now at the two minute warning. And this is where it became the Pittsburgh fans had to be thinking no 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 they're not just gonna after all of this. We need an outcome. Second and 11. Jacobs gets him a bit closer. Take the tie. Steeler fans are saying no tie. After they pick up some yardage that gets Carlson closer from 47, they'll kick it and send their rivals from L.A. home. Pittsburgh is in. The Raiders are in. And what other way could this regular season end for the Raiders? So many storylines throughout. One of them, the work of Rich Visaccia taking over for Gruden, getting into the playoffs. The first coach since Wally Lem, the 1961 Oilers, led a team to the playoffs despite not being the coach week one. Speaking of week one, you remember that insane overtime victory over the Ravens on a Monday night, which started the Raiders season? In the final analysis, it's almost forgotten among the highs they've enjoyed and the lows they've endured. They lost 48 to 9 in Kansas City less than a month ago, and nobody thought they were going to be a playoff team. It is a testament to everyone in the organization that somehow they are. Keep in mind that all the teams they beat after that Arrowhead debacle, Cleveland and Indianapolis on the road, as well as Denver and finally the Chargers at home, were all in the playoff picture when they played. You could point out the breaks they caught with some of the team's quarterback situations. I would counter by asking who dealt with more than the Raiders this season, and their season isn't over yet. Here's Josh Jacobs with Diana Racine. Guys, I'm here with Josh Jacobs. Josh, the way this game ended, you guys get the win, and now you're headed to the playoffs. What does this feel like for you right now? Man, I mean, I told the guys coming in, everything we want right here is on the line. I haven't ever been to the playoffs since I've been in the league. And, man, I told them I'm going to leave everything I have out there. Injury, no injury, didn't really matter. So I, I went out there and gave them everything I had. Everything this Raiders team has been through this season, how did you guys get here? Man, believing in each other. I mean, on the outside, it was a lot of noise, but on the inside, every day we was working. Uh, every day we was putting our head down and believing in, in each other, and we came out here and showed it today. It's your first time going to the playoffs as a player. For Derek Carr, it'll be his first time yeah. playing in a playoff game. You smile when I say his name. Why? Man, because, man, y'all don't know how, how big of a leader he is, the kind of good he is, the kind of the kind of work that he has, man. And uh, 
the guys love him. The guys play for him. Um, so to be out here to go out there and play in a playoff game and, and know that he can play in the man, it, it's, it's an amazing accomplishment. All right, Josh, congratulations. Thank Good you. luck in the postseason. Thank you. Have a good one. Guys, back to you. Tim Hasselback's alongside. What you should know about these Sunday shows, they're pretty well scripted. We lay things out and we have some planning. <laughs> this wasn't scripted. Tim nope. sat down, he just looked at me, he just shook his head and said, this is nuts. And it, and it truly was. And I can, I can sympathize with Charger fans. I can sympathize with Steeler fans who, who are, they, they needed it more yeah. than the teams watching and rooting for the teams in that game needed it. How do you best sort of describe the, the highs and lows of this Raiders season and how they were best captured by this game? Well, I think you describe the highs and lows of the Raiders season. I mean, I, I don't think it can be overstated. I agree. The, the leadership, and Josh Jacobs just touched on it, answering Diana's question about the way he's handled it. I mean, think about some of the questions that he was asked because, you know, the head coach is dismissed from the team. And so who did everyone want to – you know, ask questions to the quarterback about everything You're right. on the field and off the field. And the way that he handled those things, I think, sent a message to the rest of the organization, the rest of that team, and they responded. Then to get to this situation, Scott, where I actually think there was a moment where they were going to be content just running the clock out. Well, because they both go if they do. Correct. And so I think they were at that point. Then once they got that first down and had the timeout, it was like, look, you know what? Here, we're we're going we're gonna to win. I mean, this is, you know, Al Davis just win, baby. I mean, here we go. Like, this is what we're going to do. And so I, you also said it at the top of the show, think, to think all of these games, this was the best game of the year. Yeah. And it was the last game of the year which decided – you know, so much in terms of the playoffs. And, and I say it all the time. There's no more bottom line league in sports than the National Football League. And so the Chargers season ends. But what Herbert did and what that Chargers team did in erasing a 15-point deficit in the last 450 or whatever it was, all those fourth downs, to have, to have this chance – it's, it's not a consolation prize, but I think, I mean, you, you go out swinging. I don't know what more Herbert and the Chargers could have done. Look, he's a superstar. He's going to be an MVP candidate in years to come. The question ends up being, though, and you talked about this in the highlight, going for it on fourth down when you're backed up, you're right, it isn't Madden. So you start to think about some of the things that they did, taking the time out late in the game, maybe with a lack of awareness of what's going on. Yeah. I do think that – probably need to look at some of the things that Brandon Staley did in this football game. And maybe what he didn't do. I mean, you, you have the Raider team as gassed as they're likely to be. You have just it, – it, whatever emotions that, that might have been on the Raiders' side are now gone, and you've got one play from the two-yard line in a city where you roll the dice and yeah. you, you double down on, uh, you know, 8-3 against a face card, man. In retrospect – do you like your chances to make the playoffs on one play? Well, and if you think about it, because you, you're so dependent on a coin toss, like you can make the argument about how your team is playing, but because there was no time left, like you now are acknowledging that you're also relying on a coin toss. So what is better? Is better to go for, as you said, against a gas defense from the two-yard line yeah. or rely on a coin toss that could give them the football, which means Justin Herbert, who many – you know, in many respects was the best player on the field, he maybe never even gets a chance to touch the football in overtime. As it turns out, I mean, it comes down to a kick on quite literally the last play of the regular season where three teams' playoff fates were on the toe of Carlson. Just, uh, you couldn't, you, Collinsworth said it on the broadcast, you couldn't script it, and if you would have, you'd have walked out of the theater. It made no sense. This game was pretty good, too. Let's, uh, let's chart the fortunes of another L.A. team. They had a visit from... The faithful, and man, there are a lot of faithful in the building. The Niners could get in with a win. NFC West rivals, and this was all Rams in the first half. Tyler Higby, a touchdown grab. It's 17 to nothing, and beautiful throw from Stafford. Hell of a grab from Higby, and then who's that celebrating down there with our tight end? That's the coach. They're like, hey, coach, coach. Back, back to your place, all right? It's 17 to nothing, and Garoppolo throws a duck, gets picked off by Taylor Rapp. It's a 17-3 game at halftime. Rams are 45-0 under McVay when they lead at the half coming into the day. And then here comes Garoppolo and the Niners 
out of the locker room, and they're a different team. Debo Samuel, give it to 19. That guy is unstoppable. His eighth rushing touchdown of the season. Suddenly, it's a 17-10 game. Oh, I know what let's do. Let's throw it. It's Samuel to Jawan Jennings, who's all alone. He bobbled it briefly, and Samuel's doing everything for this Niner team. All of a sudden, this game is tied. And again, there were a whole lot of red shirts cheering their guys on. Jalen Ramsey disgusted on the sideline early fourth. Niners approaching the red zone. Ramsey, just an incredible bobbling interception. Garoppolo was looking for Kittle. And he says, I got hit in the head, and he did. And often, in fact, most often, that will get the flag. It did not. The Rams, with Ramsey making a remarkable play, stay tied at this point in the game. Then it's Stafford. Where's 10? This is a third and sixth play. They've done nothing in the second half. And Stafford, as he gets hit, throws an absolutely perfect ball to Cuff who finishes the year with 145 catches. Later in the drive, third down again. Where's 10? Back corner of the end zone, another touchdown. Seven catches, 118 yards, and a touchdown. Fourth player since 1970 is cup to lead in receiving yards, receptions, and receiving touchdowns. It's 24-17. Now, San Francisco had the ball. They couldn't do anything with it, so they punted. Then they got the ball back with no timeouts left. And Garoppolo's got to lead him down the length of the field to try to tie this game. Who else? It's Debo. Big time pass and big time run after the catch. And then it's Jennings for the touchdown. Jimmy Garoppolo and the Niners go the length of the field without a timeout to tie things up at 24s. Opening drive of overtime, third and six. Jennings, what a day. Two touchdowns, six catches, 94 yards. Third and goal. Can they win it with a touchdown? They're looking for Kittle. Good tackle. Kittle's not able to break free. That sets up a field goal from Gold, who, by the way, had to punt and did a heck of a job punting. We're not going to show a punt, but trust me, it was important. Now we're under two minutes to go. Stafford's looking deep for Odell Beckham Jr. and Ambry Thomas is there to get the interception. That's it and that's all. And San Francisco down 17 to nothing with absolutely nothing going their way in the first half. They come roaring back to tie it late, win it in overtime. And San Francisco on to the tournament. With a season on the line, they overcome that deficit. And since the merger, that comeback match is the largest by a team who clinched their spot in a season finale in 1993. The Raiders also erased a 17-point deficit to win in overtime. They went on to beat the Broncos again in their first playoff game. Jawan Jennings with a huge game visited with Lindsey Theory afterwards. You guys clinch a playoff berth with this win. Yes, sir! Wait, what does, what does that mean to this team? It means everything. Like I said, we're not done. We got another week of football. And for us and this team, it just means we got to go back to work. And there's nothing else we'd rather do than play football next Sunday, next Saturday, Friday, Monday, Thursday. It don't matter. Can't wait. A lot of emotions throughout the whole game, too. Just the ups and downs, getting off to a slow start, and then coming back like we did. It was it took everything and a lot, you know, we say that a lot of weeks, but this one really did and I felt it after the game. I know a lot of guys in that locker room did. It was it was worth it, though. It was one of those games that you won't forget anytime soon. Tim's back. There are a lot of catch-alls that are thrown around in our business. I think one word that's really used a lot these days is narrative. And, mm -hmm. and it's how do people, what's the narrative on Jimmy Garoppolo? Well, I, I, it doesn't it doesn't jive with the guy we saw late in that game, does it? No, not not at all, because he's a guy that the team basically said, look, we're trading up to draft your replacement. In fact, we're probably going to play him early on in the season. Yep. And I have at a some package point, him, right? Yeah, and at some point, we're probably going to replace you with him. Because yeah. you're but, a bum. That's the yeah, way people talk we, about We're it. moving on. doesn't yeah. matter that you've taken us to a Super Bowl before. Uh -huh. we're, we're, we're moving on. And what's interesting is, is the game started poorly. Just like, you, you know, you the – I mean, it was – and in the highlights, it's like, you know, some of the interceptions, like, they were bad. Yeah. 
but his ability to in the second half and Kyle Shanahan's ability in the second half to get them rolling was special. I mean, it was different and it's like as you're watching them, you're going, wait a second, this team with that running attack, like in a quarterback that can with no timeouts left against a championship caliber defense like the Rams have to go in and make plays like that. That's impressive. That's hard to do, especially when you know, think of the magnitude of it, Scott. Mm -hmm. Like that potentially could have been on his last drive in a in a Niners uniform. Mm -hmm. Like that, like that's the magnitude of it. Not just, hey, we, this could end up in the postseason. Right. Like almost like career altering type of drive from the standpoint of what's next for me. And what's next for them is a game at Dallas. And what when when you first saw that, what was your initial thought? Yeah, you know, when they popped up the NFC matchups, I thought. That's a bad matchup for Dallas. Why? Well, because look at this team. Look how explosive they are in the run game mm -hmm. and how unique they are in the run game. And with a creative play caller like Kyle Shanahan and then a quarterback who, listen, you can say what you want because of what the narrative is, but has there ever been a time where it seems like he's playing with more confidence than right now? Not you know, after the last 30 minutes of football and then overtime, but so whatever the, it was, almost 40 minutes. And you said this to me was we were watching it. I mean, the Kyle Shanahan basically said, look, if he's healthy, he's our guy. Mm -hmm. Like, he got the vote of confidence prior to That's my to point. The after game. Lance got the victory, granted, yeah. it was against the Texans. But he said if he can go and he's out there with his, his hand all bandaged up, you saw somebody try to dap him up. And he's like, yeah, whoa, whoa, no, whoa, 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 <laughs> that's the thumb, man. But, I mean, I thought it said a lot that Shanahan said he's our guy on the road in this game. And then he was awful for 30 minutes. Yep. I just think it's interesting, Tim, what a guy's capable of. And you believe they're capable of going to Dallas and theoretically ending it there. I do, the because they're unique in the way they run the football. You said at 19, Debo Samuel, I don't know how you decide what he is and how you defend him. Get him the ball. And so, yeah, I think it's I think it's a huge I just think that that's a bad matchup for the Dallas Cowboys and you look at a team like Tampa Bay gets to play Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I think if you're Dallas, you would have much rather seen the Eagles again. What is what a Sunday. And this is the A block of the show. I mean, there's a lot more there's a lot more to come. We will talk to you a little bit later.